because we've seen a couple papers in this line already, including from OpenAI, I didn't start off with that as the original part. It's still pretty original though. People are training models based on the individual steps of reasoning and not just on the final result. What they're hinting at in this paper, using synthetic data doesn't necessarily limit you to the same capability as the model that generated the synthetic data. People who own interesting data sets don't have quite the lock or the stranglehold that maybe we thought they did. Earlier this year, Microsoft invested $10 billion into OpenAI. This massive investment allows Microsoft to make a huge amount of profit. They have the right to 75% of OpenAI's profits until their initial investment is returned, and then they can take 49% of OpenAI's profits until they receive $92 billion in profit from the deal. But interestingly, Microsoft is making it harder for OpenAI to generate income by adding their own competition into the mix, and weirdly they're giving it away for free. Now what I mean by this is that the AI world is split into two camps. On the one hand, you have the community-built open source models and on the other the privately owned models. While the open source models rely on community effort and very little by way of funding, the case is different for privately owned models. Privately owned models are within the vaults of Silicon Valley big boys like OpenAI, Google and Meta, who boast superior money power. Predictably, open source models come into the mix with the romantic idea of beating the Silicon Valley behemoths at their game. But time and again, the privately owned models with their billion dollar deep pockets have always proven to be the kings of the game. At least this has been the case until Microsoft's latest model came into the picture. You see recently Microsoft unexpectedly burst onto the scene with Orca, making it the first time a private behemoth was delving into the realms of open source community built AI models. For clarity's sake, Orca is an open source AI model, much smaller than large language models like ChatGPT. However, in this fight, size doesn't seem to matter because Orca comes with some great features such as the innovative training model. It is with this innovative training model that Microsoft's newest innovation is taking on the Silicon Valley giants in their own game. Not to mention that Orca has completely swept out the longest standing king of open source AI models, Vicuna. But what is Orca and why is it so special about it? And most importantly, what is Orca bringing to the table that will benefit AI users? You see, the AI game is a money game and only the rich can play because we're talking about models with billions of parameters in them that cost millions to gather. This involves very costly processes such as gathering vast and adequate data, training base models, fine tuning them, and reinforced learning from human feedback or RLHF. For anyone that's used Amazon Web Services, you know how easy it is for costs to spiral out of control. And this causes a major barrier to entry for smaller competitors. However, there's a lifeline enabling these smaller firms to play the game and even get ahead. It's called distillation, which essentially allows the smaller players to learn from the bigger ones like OpenAI. Distillation essentially involves tapping into the response from larger models like the GPT-4 to teach smaller models to imitate them. And the thinking behind this move is, once we have the large models, we could also have much smaller models to replicate some of their features by simply imitating them while maintaining their size. So while the large language models or LLMs do the major work of learning all they can about our world, the smaller models learn from this vast reservoir of knowledge to replicate their action without doing the heavy work. A great example of working smarter and not harder. And this is where Microsoft Orca comes in. So basically Orca is a 13 billion parameter model specially fit to blow up the capacity of smaller models through distillation. It actually latches onto GPT-4 learns from its rich and vast signals, which include explanation traces, step-by-step -step thought processes, and other really high-level instructions. This super smart student understudies the master and learns everything possible from it by absorbing its vast knowledge and really understanding the reason behind every one of its decisions. Orca takes things a notch higher with its progressive learning capabilities, but how does it achieve this? Orca takes in large-scale and diverse imitation data that helps it constantly learn and adapt. This actually makes it a continuously evolving tool that is as powerful, or maybe more powerful, when you stack it side by side with the master, GPT-4. Now what are the capabilities of Orca, and how does it fare when compared to OpenAI? Orca's progressive learning ability that we talked about earlier is really the cornerstone for its tremendous success. But why is this so? First off, this ability makes it stand out from other traditional AI models that only imitate the LLM in style and nothing else. Orca, on the other hand, doesn't just imitate the style of LLMs. 
it also captures the reasoning process. It then uses the explanation traces to burrow down into the basic logic behind GPT-4 responses. As a result, it not only generates accurate responses, but also shows an in-depth understanding of the different nuances and context of different scenarios. This superpower makes Orca's performance quite remarkable, and with GPT-4 providing it with the necessary guidance and feedback, Orca continually refines its learning process and improves how it understands complex instructions. However, while all these capabilities really sound amazing, how well does Orca perform when subjected to some benchmarks? Well, this is where the competition really is, teacher versus student. Trust me, you don't want to miss any bit on how this really plays out. Now let's start with complex, zero-shot reasoning benchmarks. In Big Bench Hard or BBH and AGI Eval, Orca is miles ahead of other conventional instruction-tuned models, such as the Vicuna 13B. In fact, it beats the Vicuna 13B by more than 100% in BBH and 42% in AGI eval. These results are quite significant since these benchmarks are designed to test the model's ability to reason and make decisions in complex scenarios. It is clear that Orca is the top pick among instruction-tuned AI models, but how does it compare to OpenAI's GPT-4 on the benchmark? It is quite remarkable that Orca goes shoulder to shoulder with GPT-4, matching its larger competitor ability for ability on the BBH benchmark. Now, this result is really crazy when you consider the size difference between both models. As a reminder, GPT-4 has 1.7 trillion parameters versus Orca's 13 billion. That makes Orca 99% smaller than GPT-4 based on the number of parameters. And this goes ahead to show that Orca can compete favorably with large language models in performance, despite being on the low end size-wise. Now when it comes to performance in professional and academic examinations such as SAT, LSAT, JARI and GMAT, Orca competes favorably. Though not at par with GPT-4, it still beats every other model tested. Let's put this in context. Typically, professional exams test a wide range of skills such as critical thinking, problem solving and some serious analytical reasoning. So, for Orca to pull off a competitive performance tells a lot about its advanced abilities. Moreover, in some cases like the Web of Lies test, Orca has won over GPT-4. It actually beats the king of AI models with 3% better results and is miles ahead of Vaikuna, scoring over 24% better. But overall it still lags behind GPT-4, which still maintains its superiority in most cases. Interestingly, based on an average of all of these tasks, Orca outclassed GPT-3.5 and performed two times better than Vaikuna. While this is significant, it also represents a new milestone and an upgrade for open-source AI models. Already, it appears that Orca will give the larger models a run for their money, which is interesting given the huge investment Microsoft has in OpenAI. What do you think? Will Orca cause much of an issue for OpenAI? Let's hear your thoughts in the comments section below. Meanwhile, size gives the Orca some remarkable advantages that also stands it out from other instruction-tuned models and even the larger private models. For one, the smaller size plus the high-level capabilities, similar to those of larger models, like GPT-4, signifies a major breakthrough in the AI space. What this means is that Microsoft has thrown open the door to the AI space for more developers to get a piece of the action. This increased level of accessibility means there's a chance that AI won't be completely dominated and controlled by a small group of the wealthiest individuals. Next is efficiency and scalability. Because of the model's small size, there are fewer resources needed to train and operate the model. And in effect, this means a more sustainable and cost-effective solution for AI development. With wildfires raging throughout the world, we need to ensure that AI computing power doesn't cause further negative impact on global warming. Ultimately, Orca's size makes adaptability easy, so developers can adapt it to several applications. This means greater versatility and utility for the model even over large models like GPT-4. By making Orca open source, Microsoft is providing greater accessibility to other developers. This reflects their commitment to AI and also shows their firm belief that AI will transform technology. And that's definitely what this decision will do when you consider the advantages. First off, it will open Orca to developers who will dissect and understand the intricacies of the model, utilize it in developing similar models, and even enhance it with their own ideas. The complete democratization of AI is another thing open sourcing Orca will achieve. So with the door thrown open, the next logical thing is that more developers will come into the space. And when this happens, the space which has remained a mystery for the most part, 
will now be open to all, increasing transparency. Now, with this amount of participation in the space, you can rest assured that the pace of development in the AI space will take on a new dimension. In the end, this is a major bet by Microsoft that will push the boundaries of innovation in the AI space and give the larger models a good run for their money. So from the ability to progressively learn from larger language models while maintaining a small size, to going head-to-head -head with them and heralding a new era of open sourcing in the AI space, Orca is setting up a new order that could be a threat to OpenAI and GPT-4. However, only time will tell how successful the Orca will truly be and the impact this will have on Microsoft's investment in OpenAI. To keep up to date with the latest in AI, subscribe to Tectonic Shift. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a share and a thumbs up. That's all for now. See you in the next one.